There is something surreal about the moment a military staff car pulls to the curb of a home. The age-honored tradition that sends military members to deliver the news that no family ever wants to receive. For those who are delivering the news, it is the longest walk they'll ever make. For no matter how well rehearsed, no matter how many times they formulate the words they know they must eventually say, each and every word will be torturous to deliver and even more torturous to receive. He spoke the ever famous words of, the President and the Department of Defense regret to inform you. And those words carry such life-changing, you know, a life-changing momentum with them. She said two Army men had just left her house. That Brennan had been killed in action. I went totally numb, totally had, there was no feeling at all. I didn't, I, I, I just didn't want to believe it was true. I knew that Brennan's parents being notified was going to take some time because there is no base or military organization within that's not National Guard within Oregon. And that I wasn't sure where the, their notification officers were going to come from. Up rolls a car, and just by the description of the car, you knew this was a government vehicle. I remember one of the first things that Linda said was, don't let him come to the door. I know she was still holding out hope, you know, that there was a mistake. Even my, myself, and inside myself, I was saying, uh, you're not coming to my house. You're going to somebody else's house down the street. It was, it was a way of holding off even for another minute or, or two minutes, the news of, of, or the reality of what had taken place. Just 17 days shy of his 27th birthday, Army Sergeant Brennan Gibson and two of his fellow servicemen were killed when an IED obliterated the Humvee that they were riding in. He wasn't even supposed to be going out on that mission. It was a last minute mission. And they were kind of getting everything together and Brennan said, I'm going with you guys. And they said, no, you don't need to go. And he said, no, if my guys are going, I'm going too. He showed his care for others, even in an adverse situation and didn't give it a second thought. Parents are not supposed to outlive their children, and the pain you see in the eyes of those that have is truly heartbreaking. In the days that follow the death of a child, there is a vacuum so great and anguish so painful, a parent struggles just to get their feet out of bed and face another day. Unless you've lost a child, and especially to war, you really don't get it. I have never experienced any kind of grief like this before than what it's like to see your child die before you do. In death, the respectful, ceremonial, and precise nature of a military funeral is a powerful statement and a living testimony to those who have lost so much. It is the reverent and moving act of respect that pays tribute to the fallen and honors the ultimate sacrifice a warrior can give. His birthday being on the 27th was just almost a, a calling that he, that was the day we were going to bury him too. I thought it was kind of neat that on his 27th birthday, we would honor his and celebrate his life as well as say goodbye or see ya. Imagine if you can, however, in the midst of such unbearable grief, in the middle of their deepest sorrow and struggling to cope with their loss, they receive word that someone's planning to pick at the funeral of their son and even make their day worse. My casualty affairs officer had pulled me aside um, as soon as I landed and he said, there's a chance that there will be some protesters at Brennan's funeral. In Kansas, there is a radical and extremely misguided group of fanatics that twist a Bible full of hopes for their own demented purpose. They travel to the funerals of our war fallen, our American heroes, proselytizing their perverted and twisted truth. These protesters use the backdrop of the broken and the service of those who sacrificed everything as a platform for their message of hate. Everything I stood for, they were coming against. Everything this young man stood for and gave his life for, they, they mocked 
It was another surreal moment of who would protest a funeral. It was really upsetting to know that someone would want to come and disrupt our, t our special time to say goodbye to our son, who was fighting so that they could have the freedom to come and, and pick it. I knew I wasn't going to probably go out there and start busting some heads, but I was going to do everything I could to make sure that that didn't happen. And I could see across the way uh, a few of the people with their signs, and I, just down the street, I, I heard this sound. When I saw them, I was overwhelmed by the fact of <laughs> the cavalry's here. It was just absolutely wonderful to see them ride up on their motorcycles with their flags. I've seen a lot of great things. I can tell you this is right up there because on their faces was the look of, we'll take care of you. We've got this thing covered, and they did. Uh, I probably would have gone to jail that night. I don't know what I would have done, but it wouldn't have been good. You, you want to go, and you want to go hit them or do something violent to them. But at the same time, you know you can't. You know that it's the antithesis of what we're supposed to do. You know, they're out dying so that we can enjoy what we're doing at home. You know, and, and the least we can do is be there for the families. Everything these guys stood for was that this young man, in, in this case that day, Brennan Gibson, was going to be treated and was going to be honored in the way that he should, and there would be no interruptions. The Patriot Guard Riders were formed in response to that to shield the family from these people, shield them physically with our bodies and our flags. If they get too loud, fire up a couple motorcycles, shuts them right down. Now, obviously, that's the way to do it. And what that is, is a, it's a very powerful thing to do, to nullify idiots like that. These rough and even tougher looking guardians come from every walk of life imaginable. With over 186,000 members nationwide in climbing, they are motivated by a sense of fairness and hell-bent on ensuring that those who have paid the ultimate price of freedom receive the funeral and respect they deserve. Uh, we've been out here when it's been below freezing. We've been out here in the pouring rain, uh, the snow, the sleet, uh, wind blowing. We feel that it's the least that we can do for what they've paid. To have an organization like this there for families of fallen service people is a godsend. If there's a little bit of a way that I can help to give back uh, part of what they've lost, just even though it's very minor compared to what they're giving up, um, I jump at the chance. Uh, even though I've done 250 or 300 of these, each one is different, each family is different, each setting is different. You know, we all, we all feel it. I feel very honored to be a part of this, of this organization. It's, for me, it's very cathartic. We're not a political organization in any way, when, and when we get together, we're all Americans, and we're all here for the same purpose, and that is to honor the fallen hero. Some within their ranks have never served a day in the military. Some join the group because of a firsthand experience they've had with a group at a funeral for their family member. And some, like Nick Kindler, a veteran of the Vietnam War, wants to make sure that the way that they were treated when they came home never happens to anyone again. When we came back from Vietnam, we came back as pariahs. I was never spit on, but I was called a baby killer. I was denounced. Uh, this will never happen again. As long as I'm alive, as long as Patriot Guard is around, this will never happen again. Recently, the United States Supreme Court has announced that it will adjudicate the case of Snyder versus Phelps. This case speaks directly to the issue of First Amendment free speech and the responsibility of those using it. Our liberties as a nation are precious, powerful, and pure. Yet with those established freedoms comes a level of responsibility to the premise and promise for which they were established. May the liberty and justice for all so pledged by all who recite our Pledge of Allegiance, be garnered and honored for those who willingly gave us the greatest gift of all. I've been on the other side of the flag line three times.
It's a different feeling. And what we do makes a difference. There is a piece of property on a quiet ridge with a majestic view of Mount Hood and Mount St. Helens near Portland, Oregon. A strip of that ground belongs to Sergeant Brennan Gibson, interred with over 100,000 other warriors just like him. It is a national cemetery that honors and entombs the faithful and the fallen. Scripture teaches that love is never expressed with more power or clarity than when a person lays down their life for another. John and Linda, Karina and Ken, see the significant difference between words like lost and given. Unanimous in their conviction that American warriors are willingly giving and surrendering their life for the lives of others. They did not lose and no one took from them the life for which they freely gave. 